Hi Stampers, this is Kim with Great Inspirations. Thank you for joining me. Today we are going to take a look at a brand new bundle from Stampin' Up! called Beauty of the Deep. And as you might have guessed, it is an ocean themed stamp set. And here are a few cards I have made using that bundle. And here is a look at the stamp set Beauty of the Deep. This stamp set has um, no sentiments, so that gives you a chance to use some of your favorite sentiments with some corals. Here's a cute little sea urchin fish and some um, seaweed or sea plants in an anchor. And right up here, a few little dots that can be used for sand or just some extra little detail or filler on your cards. And then of course there are coordinating dies and they're right here. There are a lot of them. And to make it a little more easy to tell what's what, as always I have stamped out the images. I um, always set, tell you that I like to do this um, whether I do it on cardstock or just do it on a piece of printer paper. I, the black and white is great, but I like to stamp it. I like to see how it looks when I stamp it. I like to see how they look in different colors. It doesn't even matter the colors. And that just gives me some more ideas for cards. Um, sort of the more I can work with the stamped images and colors. So these are cling stamps, which means they are red rubber, and they have the sticky on the back that will, or the little, on the little um, label that you can put on the back, and they will cling to your acrylic blocks, and they will also cling to your acrylic blocks if you do not want to put the little sticker on the back. That is up to you. So, as I said, Here's a little better look at them. This little fish, I don't know, to me it looks like some kind of tang, and this looks like a Moorish idol. And I think this nice um, big image, it's just so nice, it's a, a little coral, I would say. And then the dies. There is a coordinating die for each of the images except one, which is the little dots. However, in my mind, when I was doing the die cutting, I thought this little die right here, which is this one, I thought, oh, that must cut out the sand. Totally forgetting about this image. So you know what I did? I had to stamp out some sand. <laughs> and look, you could use that to cut out the sand and then if you wanted to say you have a card like this and you wanted to place a little sand in front of your coral have it in front and behind it you could do it like that so perhaps you can use that die for a dual purpose I had to laugh at myself on that one but here are the dies this cuts out the little seaweed image here. And of course, here is the anchor. This is the coral. And this is this beautiful image right here. And here is the little sea urchin. And of course, the two fish. And these three dies are just um, standalone dies. They cut out a little more coral that you can put in your ocean scene. There are the images, and here are the dies. Let's talk a little bit about the cards. Now, of course, this bundle, you can buy the stamp set on its own, you can buy the dies on their own, but when you purchase them together in a bundle, you do save 10%. And as I said, they will be found in the brand new Stampin' Up! annual catalog, which as I am videotaping this, um, 
this catalog goes live tomorrow, Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023. So not many more hours to go before you'll be able to order from this catalog. And of course, if you do not have a catalog, you will be able to go online and there is a virtual catalog and also a PDF that you can download. So let's just talk a little bit about these cards. These two cards are essentially the same card. And there is a card almost identical to it in the Stampin' Up! catalog, the brand new annual catalog, on page 112. I have changed it some by using um, some different color ink and some different embellishments and the like. But the size card that is shown is what I call a mini slimline and it measures across the front three and a half by six so when you cut your cardstock you will cut it seven by six and score at three and a half fold it and there's your card base and this will fit inside a regular envelope the kind that you would mail just a letter in a letter to a friend but then I also created the card in the A2 size and that measures four and a quarter by five and a half across the front. So that means eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and fold for your card base. Now this is white craft ink. I have a love-hate relationship with white craft ink. But when I saw it on the misty moonlight, um, cardstock it just looks so pretty and I knew I just had to make that card and then this is misty moonlight ink so what I did first was stamp my little seaweeds or sea plants there and I just kind of staggered them in rows and I wanted to make sure it was dry and of course with dye ink dye ink dries quickly but the white ink is a pigment ink and it dries slowly. But you can hurry it along by using your heat gun, which is of course what I did because I'm always in a hurry. But I just thought it was so pretty and it just really gave me the will to use that white craft ink more. And it comes, the ink pad, and the refill, they come together. And I don't use this enough that every, so that every time when I go to use the white ink, I have to re-ink my ink pad. And you don't have to put a lot of ink on it. You just kind of want to cover it. Well, I suppose if you were doing a large project or several um, cards, but you just need to put enough to cover the pad and, um, allow you to do your stamping and actually today I was rather shocked to find that this is still moist and I could probably still use it but it's been probably three days since I've made the cards so but you do almost every time I use mine I have to put a little more ink on it and but I did really like the results on this so like I said maybe I'll use that white ink pad more because it does just leave really, really pretty results, I feel. Now, if you do not have white craft ink, which is a pigment ink, you could use Versamark and then emboss it with white, but be sure to use an embossing buddy or some other anti-static product um, because this is such has such fine detail. So you don't want your um, embossing powder going in places you don't want it. So, so there's that card. Now, the next three cards, they're very similar, and they're just scenes. I just, you know, cut out a bunch, stamped and die cut a bunch of the images. But for the backgrounds, I used blending brushes. And on this one, I used, at the bottom is Lost Lagoon, and then it goes into um, Pool Party, and next into soft sea foam. And I just kept blending and blending and I didn't want it to be all that dark, but 
but I did want there to be sort of a suggestion that there was an ocean back there that all these fish are swimming in and all the coral and other plants and critters are living in. So I stamped some of the images directly onto the cardstock and then others I die cut and this I did not glue down all the way. I wanted to have it, give it a little dimension. And I also, this is Calypso Coral cardstock, but I also took a little Calypso Coral ink in around the edges and in other spots. I just added a little ink, it darkened it up a bit and gave it a little more depth and dimension. Now, these little fish, they're cute as can be. And I've used them again here. This time I stamped them on um, with Memento Tuxedo Black on white. And then I used the same black ink and stamped them on the new Lemon Lolly color. And I liked both, but die cutting them was something else. Show you. Here's the die. And here are my first, res well, one of my results. I think the first one I did was were the ones I stamped in Lost Lagoon and they all turned out perfectly. And then boom, that one didn't. And I thought, well, why not? What did I do wrong? And you see the top of this die, it's, this is open, but up here it's more opaque. And I was like, well, I'm gonna need X-ray vision to be able to line this up. How was I so fortunate to line these up? You know, I, I cut out three of these and every one turned out perfectly. Then on my fourth one, not so much. Well, then I got to looking at the die. See those two little holes? Well, boom, that's my x-ray vision. Because when you line this up to die cut it, get it all lined up with the fish, and I know it's gonna be really hard to see on the camera, but if you can see color, the color of your ink through these two dots, you know this is lined up. Put some washi tape on it, sticky note, whatever you use to hold it, run it through the die cut machine, and it will come out just perfect. I was so happy. So yeah, these two little holes, that's our x-ray vision. So, that's about my little tip for cutting out the little Moorish idols there. At least that's what I'm calling them. And then the next thing on this card I wanted, you know, I wanted it all to kind of look like it's under the water, but I wanted to use these die cuts. And I thought, oh, okay, they're going to have white around them. I could go and color them in. Okay, I can do that. Color around the edges a little. Just use maybe even, you know, a, a little blending, one of our small, have you seen our small blending brushes? But I thought still, it's too big. You know, maybe I could use a little sponge dauber. And I thought, no. So what I did, <laughs> this is the piece of paper I've die cut these things from. I just simply went over it. The background of this is Lost Lagoon. Just used a blending brush, went over it with the Lost Lagoon, and then stamped my images. And I will say, this will work better when you're stamping your images with darker colors, then I die cut. So that when I die cut my images, I don't have the white around them. It's the same color as the background. And it just kind of takes that stark white away and just kind of blends it in more with the um, scene on the card. So there's that one. Now for these two cards, I did the background first, the blending brushes. And then I put on all the images. This card I did just a little differently. I stamped my seaweed. And I did several generations, like first generation, second generation, and even third generation. Then I put the Lost Lagoon, Pool Party, and um, Soft Sea Foam ink use the blending brushes to put it on and I thought it just softened the seaweed 
and made it look like maybe um, you know a little bit of a more of a murky ocean but still you can see the seaweed here's the coral again this is the lemon lolly and the cute little fish so those are the projects I did Let me bring these two cards back in these are the projects I created using the beauty of the deep bundle and again here's the bundle that's found in the new annual catalog that as I said goes live tomorrow May 2nd 2023 and all the supply list cutting measurements and some little tips and tricks for creating these cards will be found in my corresponding blog post and the log to that post will be in the description of this video. Thank you so much for joining me and until next time, stamp happy!